What's up everyone and welcome. You've all probably heard already that inflation has hit a 30 year high. If you haven't, well you just did for me, so now you know. Now this is partly due to backups of products, low levels of resources to produce the products due to the COVID virus, uh, lack of workers, and various other reasons. If you add on to that a ransomware attack against a major logistics or, or shipping company, and things can actually explode. This is why in this episode, I want to shed light on an important report from Intel 471 about a rising threat seen in underground channels related to this important industry. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Researchers from threat intelligence firm Intel 471 published an analysis of current cybercrime underground trends online, warning that initial access brokers are offering credentials or other forms of access to shipping and logistics organizations. One of the lingering impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic is the havoc it's wreaked on the global supply chain. There have been extreme fluctuations in the availability of goods, ports around the world are severely backlogged with full containers, and shipping and logistics companies are having trouble finding workers to transport cargo. It is a precarious situation for the sector, especially as the holiday season approaches. With things as volatile as they are, a cybersecurity crisis at one of these logistics and shipping companies could have a calamitous impact on the global consumer economy. Over the past few months, Intel 471 has observed network access brokers selling credentials or other forms of access to shipping and logistics companies on the cybercrime underground. These companies operate air, ground, and maritime cargo transport on several continents that are responsible for moving billions of dollars worth of goods around the world. And uh, the idea in draw poker is for you to try to get a bigger hand than I got. I'll draw three cards, please. Two for the dealer. <laughs> I, I, I got a full house. What you got, sucker? Gee, does that beat me? All I got is two pair. A pair of ones and uh, another pair of ones. The actors responsible for selling these credentials range from newcomers to the most prolific network access brokers that Intel 40, 471 tracks. These actors have obtained these credentials by leveraging well-known vulnerabilities in remote access solutions like Remote Desktop, or RDP, VPN, Citrix, SonicsWall, among others. Among the advertisements observed by Intel 471 within the span of two weeks in July 2021, one new actor and one well-known access broker claimed to have access to a network owned by a Japanese container transportation and shipping company. The new actor included the company's credentials in a dump approximately 50 companies, allegedly all obtained via compromised Citrix, Cisco, virtual private network, and or remote desktop protocol accounts. The well-known actor claimed to have access to several accounts belonging to the company, but did not reveal how they were obtained. In August 2021, one actor known to work with groups that have deployed Conti ransomware claimed access to corporate networks belonging to a U.S.-based transportation management and trucking software supplier and a U.S.-based commodity transportation services company. The actor gave the group access to an undisclosed botnet powered by malware that included a virtual network computing function. The group used the botnet to download and execute a Cobalt Strike Beacon on infected machines, so group members in charge of breaching computer networks received access directly via a Cobalt Strike Beacon session. In September 2021, an actor with ties to the Five Hands, also um, Hello Kitty, ransomware group claimed access to hundreds of companies, including a UK-based logistics company. It's most likely that Access was obtained through a Sonic Wall vulnerability, given that Five Hands, aka Hello Kitty, is known to use that access to launch its ransomware attacks. Additionally, in September, a new actor claimed to have gained access to a Bangladesh based shipping and logistics company through a vulnerability in the Pulse Secure VPN. Finally, in October 2021, a newcomer uh, to a well known cybercrime forum claimed access to the network of a US based freight forwarding company, alleging that he had had local administrator rights and could access 20 computers on the company's network. The actor claimed he obtained the credentials to a path traversal vulnerability in Fortinet's 40 gate secure sockets layer VPN uh, portal with CVE 2018 13379. Also in October, a newcomer on a 
different well-known cybercrime forum, claimed access to a Malaysian logistics company. Those credentials were part of a package that the actor was selling for $5,000. It was unknown how he allegedly obtained those credentials. There's gold in them die hills. Well, back with another one, eh? Eh, uh, how about a couple of carrots for this rock, Pierre? Of course. Keep the change, Doc. The world has previously seen the economic damage that can come from a cyber attack on shipping and logistics industry. The NotPetya attack in 2017 devastated Danish shipping and maritime giant Mask, shutting down several of its ports and costing the company $300 million to replace systems damaged by the malware. Adam Banks, head of technology at Mask, told a business publication in 2019 that there was 100% destruction of any based or anything based on Microsoft that was attached to the network. In August, suspected foreign government-backed hackers breached a computer network at Port of Houston. Now, I'm sure you remember this is not that far in the past. One of the largest ports of the Gulf of the U.S. Gulf Coast. However, early detection of the incident thwarted any attempts to impede business operations. Though, so they actually got through it by the thick of their skin, yeah, you know, by by the hair on their head. It was very close to them to the the port of Houston being completely shut down again costing hundreds of millions of dollars disrupting major transportation of goods that is also adding to inflation those two incidents show that the logistics industry is constantly targeted and the ramifications of a cyber attack can have a crippling ripple effect on the global economy at a time when the sector is already struggling to keep things operating a successful attack could bring this industry to a screeching halt, resulting in unforeseen dire consequences for every part of the consumer economy. It's extremely beneficial that security teams in the shipping industry monitor and track adversaries, the tools and malicious behavior to stop attacks from these criminals. Proactively addressing vulnerabilities in times of high alert avoids further stress on already constrained business operations. So, what can we learn from this? Now, we can see that access brokers have varying credentials from RDP access to compromised Citrix or Cisco systems or VPN credentials. Additionally, Sonicol vulnerabilities have been attained uh, uh, along with Fortinet. These are all known attack vectors that many companies, not just in logistics, continue to leave unprotected or unpatched. It is our duty to ensure our networks are safe, and it is the duty um, of the IT departments in all logistics and shipping companies to regularly review their infrastructure to ensure the systems are fully patched, the systems get scanned for known malicious software like backdoors, cobalt strike, and other malware intrusions. Now, being resilient in this environment is not a set it and forget it process. Resiliency requires regularly scans or regular scans, tests and validation of systems integrity, along with reviewing protocols and doing your security fire drills. Think of it like a, like a ship traveling through um, rice, rough iceberg filled waters. You regularly walk the hull to see if maybe there are any holes after hitting icebergs. Well, your IT ship is under constant attack from various digital icebergs, brute force attacks, uh, vulnerability scans, phishing attacks, and more. So why not walk the ship regularly to see if there are any holes? With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.